Success depends on guiding the papers into Hitler's hands. The nightmare marching this way is only too real. And the Spanish won't let the Germans anywhere near our briefcase. We are in the dark. If the enemy is waiting for us on those beaches, history herself will avert our eyes from the slaughter. I may vomit. I may vomit with you. After I watched it, I did a deep dive into all the facts behind it because I couldn't quite believe everything in the film was true. Was there a particular fact that surprised you that you realised was actually true and wasn't made up for the film? Well, I'd ask you, did you catch us out? Did you find the facts conflicted with our version? No, no, no. I, as far as I can tell, like most of them, like it was the eyelash. I couldn't quite understand that an eyelash was the one thing they used. I thought it was incredible. I mean, the yeah. fate of Europe hanging on an eyelash yeah. seems quite extraordinary, doesn't it? I love the I love the idea that Dean Fleming was part of that group of intelligence personnel who were dreaming up ruses to you know and then went on to write the James Bond novels and you, James Fleet's character used him as the inspiration for Q in the in the books and um, I found that fascinating. The whole thing surprised me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I read the book um, some years before and I was absolutely astounded that anyone would fall for that, or that not so much they would fall for it, but that anyone would, that Churchill would accept the idea because it seemed bonkers, yeah. but he did. And uh, he was up against it in 1943. And uh, people were thinking of ways in which they could seriously um, start the allies going up through uh, through Sicily and into Italy and, um, uh, and, and saving as many lives on the front line as possible. When it came to your research for this role, were you, did you mostly look into the operation itself or did you want to focus on your particular real life people to understand it? I'd, I read Ben's, Ben McIntyre's book um, and read a little bit around the character, but really it's the character in the in the film script that you're playing. So you, <laughs> so you sort of read around it and then hope for the best, I do anyway, yeah. Uh, I, exactly the same for me, really. I mean, I think Ben's book is about as good a piece of research as you're ever, you're ever going to find on, yeah. on this subject. Um, he, it's not only meticulous and, and rigorous; it, it's fun. Yeah. It's one of the great things about when I mean, I've read most of his books, or well, if not all of them, and it's the life that he brings to it. It's it's funny, it's colourful, it's wry. Um, you know, it's it's not like it's not dry history. It's um, it just energizes you, and so <clears throat> that was enormously helpful. And then, <clears throat> as Matthew said, we were in our own sort of little sort of solar system, really, and a very small one. You know, it's, the film is strangely intimate, given the the stakes being so enormous, yes. uh, and the you know the wider stage being huge. This is just you know very much focused on say five people in a room. I mean, it's always really the script that I, yeah. I, I, um, I'm not. I've never really played in anybody where I've had to do an extraordinary amount of um, yeah. research. I generally just it's all there in front of you. Um, and Jean Leslie was a real person, yeah. but I'm playing, I'm pay, playing a version. It's like a lot of the women that were in that room, and I think like I was talking earlier to someone about. Um, there was just so much secrecy involved. So there's not much known because she wouldn't have been talking yeah. about people weren't really, you know, were involved in this incredible, like in the true sense of the word, incredible um, piece of espionage from history, but nobody really spoke about it. It yeah. was, it must have been an, uh, an exciting room to have been in and then to sort of, it's like the halcyon days to have it, you know, life go on and nobody in your day-to-day -day night life would know about this stuff. It feels very different for a World War II film because you think you've seen every type of World War II film. Um, do you think that's because it's still fairly recent that we've understood all of everything that happened? It's only like just over a decade ago. Or do you think there's something else that makes it stand out as a very different type of World War II movie? It's fascinating that this, this group, this group called the 20 committee which were a sort of very they were an ultra secret club within the intelligence world and they were made up of various intelligence officers from different branches of the military they were sort of set to dream up these ruses and to handle double agents and espionage and counter espionage and um 
and the whole purpose of them was to sort of work out audacious and ingenious plots to fool the enemy and so um uh, that was sort of endlessly interesting but it's like Connor's saying it's small and it's sort of it's like a sort of Kelly I've just done an interview with Kelly McDonald and she was saying it's a bit like a writer's room they were sort of spitballing ideas you know uh and some of them were ludicrous and some of them were sort of ludicrous but weirdly plausible and um and mincemeat certainly was one of those you know sorry no I think the ludicrous is actually key um because you know if you think about this being the war of information that could sound Again, very dry. It could sound like you know a, a, a sort of exercise, almost mathematical sort of puzzle solving, or you know. But you, it's the creativity, and um, they they had to this whole term corkscrew thinking that we mm. hear. <laughs> it, it has to be a bit out there, yeah. if not completely insane, you know, <laughs> in order really for it to have life and, and be real. Otherwise, it's all guessable. Well, I, th I think that um, for both those reasons, um, <laughs> it's a story that hasn't been allowed to be. Um, the, the papers of that haven't been, uh, weren't, uh, were under wraps until quite recently, and also um, the part that women played in, in in the war has never really been um, shown as much as the front line. This was the war, the hidden war, <laughs> and you see you see much more women's role in the hidden war, not just in in, in intelligence, but um, in, in, in this case, certainly in intelligence, but uh, the women were fighting the war um, in every way they could in a, a number of ways, um, in broadcasting and in uh, land army and in nursing and in every sort of way. So um, I'm very pleased that this film shows that hidden war and the role that women played. Um, just finally, Kelly, obviously the rest of the, all of this film is the set design, impeccable the costumes, like really transports you to that world. But for you, did it help as well that you were putting on an accent as well? Does that help you disappear into the kind of role a bit more? I was, well, that was the interesting thing because it's very, these stories have been told historically. It's like white English men in a room talking about the wall. And um, I was quite keen for Jean, she wasn't written as Scottish, but I was quite keen for her to be, um, you know, a very educated Scot. So the accent I'm doing is actually, um, it's like an Anglified Scottish accent. Um, and um, and I think that sort of was important mm, in a way as well, as much as having women in very. the room, like having, you know, you know, British people aren't just from London. <laughs>